Hey everybody, happy Monday. Welcome to another episode of Daily IoT. On today's episode, we're gonna work on getting this piece of communication working on our Internet of Things hockey memorabilia project. And I'm gonna show you how we can send stats down to our particle photon and set that up in firmware with a single line of code. Big day today. It is the first day or first game of the preseason for my Washington Capitals playing the New Jersey Devils. Everybody knows the preseason doesn't count, but I'm still really excited because it means we are getting very, very close to puck drop of the regular season. And for those that are just joining, we are working on our Internet of Hockey Things project where we are trying to take a piece of sports collector's item or memorabilia and IoT it stick a little stat tracker screen on it so that we can track stats, any stats, goals, points, block shots, saves, whatever it may be. You'll be able to track it in real time with your Internet of Things tracker thing. I'll put you down there, Bobblehead and McDavid. And so that's what we're gonna be working on today. I'm gonna to show you how to use the particle function feature of the particle ecosystem that will allow us to uh, interact with our screen from anywhere on the planet, uh, like, even though we're gonna be right here on my desk right next to it. But the idea is very simple that now, once this is set up, we can control the screen from anywhere. And so let me show you how we accomplish that with the particle ecosystem. From last episode, we got our basic firmware set up for our particle photon. And I did a little bit of refactoring, clean it up a little bit, but the main function that we have here is this update tracked stat where we can change the value that's displayed on the screen. I have a call here in my setup that calls it right when the photon is powered up and I'm gonna set it to one, two, three, four. Just to show you how that works, I'm going to turn on my particle photon and you'll see after it connects to the particle cloud that it displays one, two, three, four. There we go, that's better. One, two, three, four, you can see that there. Okay, so now what we want to do is make this callable from the cloud. And we can do that using the particle function feature of the particle ecosystem. And it's very easy. What it allows us to do is turn any function in our firmware into a function that can be called from the cloud. It wires it up so that it can be called remotely. And to do that, the function has to have a specific signature. That means it has to have a specific return type and a specific list of arguments. And what that is, is it has to return an integer. So what we're going to do is modify our update track stat function to be uh, able to be wired up to the particle cloud. And so it has to return an integer. So we'll change the return type from void to int and it has to accept a string, which it already does. Now, if your function does not have an argument of string, let's say it takes a couple of ints or a float or a double, you'll need a wrapper. You'll need to write a wrapper function that parses the string data and turns it into the arguments that you need. In our case, it works out really nice because our function already accepts a string argument. And so that's all we have to do to make this function callable from the particle ecosystem. The last step, and this is where the single line of code comes in, is we have to wire it up. And we do that by calling particle function in our setup and it takes two arguments. The first is the key or function name that we're going to use to refer to it remotely and then the function that we want to call. Now the key can only be 12 characters long and so I would call it update track stat but I think I violate the length on that and so for our key I'm just going to call it update stat. Just like that, you can call it anything that you want. The rule of thumb or guideline here is that you use ASCII numbers and uh, characters, uh, letters. You could also use a dash or underscore. Stay away from Unicode type characters. Uh, the guidance there is that certain frameworks that you will be using to call this might not handle them well. So just stick to your basic ASCII numbers and letters, dash and underscore. So we're gonna call it update stat and then you just provide it the local firmware function that you want it to call when somebody references that function name, update stat. In our case, that is update tracked stat. So just again, this update stat is what we will refer to it remotely when we want to call it. And then the second argument is the local function in our firmware that we want to invoke. Don't forget my semicolon there. And that's it. 
All we can have to do now is compile it. We'll make sure that that works without any errors. And we did, success. And so now you'll notice I took out the call and setup. So now when I reboot my Photon, which I will do here, let's hit the reset button, it should just blank out and not display anything because we're not displaying anything in the setup function anymore. Just like that. So how do we modify this from the cloud? Well, there are many ways that we can do this, but I'm gonna show you just a couple. The first and easiest is if we open up a terminal here, we can use the CLI tools. Now you'll need to install those. You can do that by doing an NPM install, install-g, I believe it's particle CLI, uh, to install those. I already have them installed, and once you do, we can invoke a particle function by calling particle call the name of our device. In our case, it is, well, let me show you that first. You can do a particle list, and it will show you here all of your devices that you've claimed. Microcast Photon is the one that is online, and that's the one that we have. And it'll even show you right here functions. It says, oh, you have a function registered. Update stat. And so the way we can call that is by doing particle call the name of the device, which is microcast photon, the name of the function, which is update stat, and then the string arguments, which we'll say cool. We'll hit enter, watch the screen, and there you have it, cool, shows up on the screen. That is pretty amazing. Having done this for over 10 years, the fact that we've gotten to a point where we can do single line of code things to, to make this sort of web interaction happen is just absolutely amazing and just very exciting. If you're not excited about this, then I don't know what to do to impress you. I, this, this, is, this is really cool stuff. Okay, so that's how we can call it from the command line, the particle CLI tools. The other option that we have uh, is if we open up a web browser here, we can go to console console.particle.io, uh, log in with your particle account. I'm already logged in and we'll come up here to the My Devices section. It'll list again all of the devices that you've claimed and whether they're online or not. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my Microcast Photon and over here on the right, it will show any functions that you have registered by calling particle.function in your firmware. And here again, you can see my update stat. And this is great for debugging. It's such a, such a great way to debug your code. Um, you can just pass the argument here and exercise it in real time. So let's change this to uh, 4567. And then we'll go ahead and hit call, keep our eyes on the screen. Look at that, I mean, it's almost instantaneous. Again, depending on how good your connection is, uh, really, really cool stuff. So that is how you can call it from the particle console. That is another option that you have. The last option that I want to show you, which is not the last option that you have, it's just the last one that I want to show you, is via the um, API, the HTTP REST API that Particle has built. We come back to our terminal, and on my Mac I have a curl installed. If you've never used curl, it's a way to uh, get um, information about a website or, or fetch a website via the command line. So we'll say curl, for example, google.com, and you can see that's the HTML. Uh, if you were to go to google.com, fun fact, it's just a redirect to www.google.com. But so let's clear that out. The way we can call the API, it's kind of a long command. So I'm just going to paste it in and we'll talk about it. We're going to do curl. The path to the API is going to be api.particle.io https forward slash v1. We're on version one of the API slash devices slash, you can use the name of your device, in my case, Microcast Photon, or you can use the device ID, whichever, and then forward slash the function that you want to call. Remember, we're using the key, not the actual firmware function name. In my case, that's update stat. And then in curl, you can pass arguments with this dash D. Um, my argument, arg, which is the string argument, is one, two, three, four. And then we do a dash D access token. This is your access token from uh, the particle cloud. If you come into the build environment, you can come to the settings tab here and see what your access token is. You just copy that. And that is all I have done here on the command line. 
and paste it in my access token. So when I run this, this is a way via a simple HTTP post that we can update the value on our screen. I'm going to hit enter, keep our eyes on the screen. One, two, three, four, again, almost instantaneous. And so that is a way that you can call, once you understand how to call the API via these very simple means like HTTP post calls, you can integrate this into anything. So other options that you have that Particle has built libraries for, there's a JavaScript library, a Windows uh, C Sharp uh, library that you can use, iOS, Android, all of those options are available to now control our display from the internet, from any device in any situation. And so that is the very quick introduction to particle function feature and how you can enable functions in your firmware to be called from the cloud. That does it for today's episode. We've got, like I said, like half of this line drawn. We're not hooked up into low sant yet. We're gonna have a whole episode dedicated to that to show you how to, to, to finish that line. But now we have it so that any cloud service can talk to our particle photon, our stat tracker project, and send updated stats down to it. So question of the day, what is your favorite sports memory? It could be a game that you played in, a sport that you played, or it could be a game that you watched, you went with with your dad or your mom, anything like that. Favorite sports memory. I appreciate everybody watching. Got a lot of exciting episodes coming up on the Internet of Hockey project. I hope you'll continue to stay tuned and watch. I hope everybody has a fantastic week. Thanks so much for watching Daily IoT, the show where together we're learning how to make the internet of things one day at a time.